Hello and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be drawing a cat eye against fur. It's a small and manageable project and we're going to be using Carbothello pencils and also some Geoconda co e -Nors. The project is manageable because it's only about 5 inches by 5 inches. So I have taped down the image and we're going to be just putting some of the perimeter of the eye in using a black Carbothello pencil to show the greatest contrast possible. I really love these Carbothello pencils because they're richly pigmented and they are also great value for money. I've had these for a very long time, have cr created a lot of projects to, with them. I really like working with dry mediums. It's great for travel, there's no mess, there's no cleanup. And this is a great project to do for a beginning project because there's very few colours involved, just a few colours for the eye and just three or four different colours for the fur. So we've got most of the perimeter in, but now we're going to be putting in some of the colour. I like these pencil extenders, they're really great for giving you back the full size pencil. So I'm using about three different greys, a light grey, a medium grey and a dark grey for the outside of the eye and all of the fur. And for the eye itself I'm using uh, two different greens, um, about three uh, different blues. There we see the lighter green. And in this project I'm trying the Geocondas for the first time. I've had them around for a while but like all of us I've got into a comfort zone of really liking the Carbothellos. So the Carbothellos are those ones with the grey end tip and the Geocondas, or koh nors however you like. And this is the sharpener that I like. Um, it is a Prismacolor Stabilo sharpener. So the Geocondas I'm using for the first time. And I like the Carbothellos, but I, I'm just used to using them. But the Carbothellos only come in 60 different colours, and while that's really great because you can layer them to produce the colour that you want if it's not in the, the tin that's included. It's sometimes just easier to find the colour that you want from maybe a different set. So I'm using that olive green that's not available in the Carbothellos from the Geocondas. They are slightly less soft, perhaps a little bit more chalky takes a little bit of time getting used to them but they're really great because they have more punchy and vibrant colours. So I'm starting to get a sense of the eye here and I'm preserving some of the highlights. Now I'm using a surface called Pastel Matte which is by a company called Claire Fontaine, it's a French company. And this is a really good surface to work on. It's not a sanded paper which you would ordinarily use for working with pastels. It's actually a surface that's made from cellulose fibres and it's fabulous. There's no fallout dust so it's really clean there's really no smudging and there's also no real need to use any fixative. 
If you do want to give a light spray of fixative afterwards, that's up to you. Maybe possibly a, a workable fixative, which might be um, something that you might want to use rather than a more permanent fixative. But I don't really use a lot of fixative and I put the, my images straight into a portfolio. So the pastel mat comes in a variety of different colours and this one that I'm using looks like it's white but it's actually a pale grey so it's almost white. Some people don't really like using a white canvas and certainly it does make all your work a little bit more time consuming when you don't have a small amount of value or mid-tone added in there. Now the key to making an eye look believable, well there's many factors involved. Layering, light light layers is one of them and you'll see how I'm holding the pencil way back which allows you to be a little bit more loose with your hand and also paying really close attention to your reference material. My reference material came from a free reference photo from a website called Pixabay which has millions of different inspiring photographs that readers upload. It's an amazing resource. But also the key is not just paying close attention to the reference but just not only also having a light hand but looking at where your shadows as well as shapes are and in the eye we do see quite a bit of vignetting which is where we get shadows more on the outside which is going to create that more rounded shape. Some people work in a very logical fashion, they like to work maybe from top to bottom or if they're right handed from the top left hand all the way down to the right hand which of course reduces any smudging because um, there will be a little bit of smudging particularly if you're using darker colours and dark greys and black and so on. But I like to just work my way around it, see what needs to be reworked and the beauty of working with pastel matte and also with pastel pencils is that you can correct your work as you go along. So if you maybe put in some areas and you think well that doesn't really look quite right you can layer more colours over the top, lay more pigment over the top essentially so you can kind of refine and rework your way along which you can't do in other mediums such as watercolour and so on. It's, it's a little bit different. It is always a good idea to work from lights to dark, however, it pastels are a very forgiving uh, medium, so I really like them. I use a masking tape which is called uh, Clean Release. It's used um, by painters and also by dressmakers. Sorry, it's, um, yes, it's used by uh, painters, not dressmakers. And you can find it anywhere. You can find it in hardware stores, so you don't need to go to uh, an art store to get it. And I like it because it comes away really cleanly and it doesn't rip the surface that you're working on. Now you'll notice that I just did some blending with my fingers. For the most part, I do try to keep my fingers away and really you don't need to use your fingers very much at all because you can blend as you go. So in essence, when you're working in this kind of work, your palette is the surface that you're working on. That takes a little bit of time to get used to. There are blending sticks that you can use but I haven't really found them to be very useful or valuable on, on the pastel matte surface. So I, for the most part, 
just use the pencils and don't really have any other tools. So really all you need for this project is the pastel mat, some tape, the uh, pencils of your choice and also a pencil sharpener. I like to keep all my pencils sharp so I sharpen them at the beginning of my project and I've tried lots of different sharpeners. I've tried manual crank ones, I've also tried electric ones and the manual ones and the one I used for this particular piece as I was saying earlier is one ba made by Prismacolor so if you're a coloured pencil lover that one's great for your Prismacolor coloured pencils but it's also made by Stabilo so these coloured coloured pastel pencils will work great. Sometimes I also like to use a little craft knife. You can also use a box cutter if you like a really long lead. So we're seeing some completion of the eye. I'll be continuing to refine it and now I'm working on the background. Now the background on this particular piece of work is really very small but there are other ways of doing the background and if you have any pan pastels which are these small round cakes you can use that to lay in some of your initial layers it can take less time but if you don't have any of those cakes it really doesn't take too long to to fill in the background and you'll notice as I go along that I use the side of the pencil rather than the tip to put um, most of the background in. I always go in the direction of the fur. So you see I really don't have a very large selection of colours here and when I was first beginning and this is a common mistake to make I think we all use way too many colours. Sometimes less is really more because you can blend as you go. What's more important than the colour selection is your values. Making sure that you have just enough lights medium tones and dark tones to complete your project and it can make it the less confusing too the more colors sometimes the more confusing so in this particular project I think I had about 10 colors overall Now in this project I use a particular white pencil. I also use a Carbothello white but the pencil that I'm using which is made by the Generals provides and here it is I think it's a 558 I'll list it in the description but it's really great it is used by painters and dressmakers because it is um, a white that shows up on a variety of surfaces and it also does not rub off. So what this means is there are pros and cons of using this. Once you lay down that white generals charcoal pencil, white charcoal pencil, you can't easily blend anything else over the top. So you want to really preserve it for your final areas or areas where you know it's just going to be white alone where there aren't any other either whites or colors added to it and this is the clean release tape I was talking about 
as you can see from that uh, corner, it lifts a tiny bit, just showing you that um, it is really easy to remove. I've used other tapes in the past and ripped my paper, so this is great for all surfaces, particularly sanded surfaces, and I also like using this for the pastel mat. You can use it a couple of times too, so it's, it's recyclable, which is nice. The piece of paper that I'm using here is really great. It's called glassine paper and it actually comes with the pastel mat when you buy it. So when you buy really large sheets, which is the most economical way, it will be large loose sheets that come sandwiched between each sheet, so don't throw those away and you can cut them to size. You'll see I'm also using circular motions too. There are many different ways that you can add highlights in. Some people like to use a white gel roll or Sakura jelly roll pen. Some people like the same General's pencil. And this is one that I like to use when it's really sharp for putting whiskers in on animals. It is far whiter than the white Carbothello pencil. One of the nice things about working on pastel mat is that you really can use lots and lots of layers. It's always a really good idea though to go really lightly. The lighter that you go in with, the more layers can be achieved. And here you can see the background is going in very quickly and you can also see with this General's pencil that the highlights are really showing up. And this is the fun part too. These areas really make an animal's fur really start looking believable and realistic.
and here we are just finishing off the eye and the fur. And so here we have the finished cat eye. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe and notification bell and I'll see you in the next video.